same knot. So I think the main thing I can contribute to this hero is not really the perfect way of playing it, but rather how you approach the game when you're playing against it or playing with yeah. it. Because it has some very clear limitations. That's why the hero is not being picked very much the last couple of years. It was it was the debate we were having just the other day. It's like like techies make sure you play a different style of Dota. Yeah. This is what annoys people. Uh, it's the fact you either have to play slower, you have to play zone control, uh, or he just turns it into a team fighter, and then things get really interesting. As long as techies is always looking to jump. Slark is the final pickup, so there's Nisha's final hero to arrive, and it will actually be Puppy on Techies, no surprise. These picks went pretty fast, actually, toward the end. Oh, and Faded is going to come and visit. Timbersaur again? Remember, it's pretty good lane against, even against Legion Commander, that's actually an even lane. See, mm -hmm. Legion Commander is one of the only strength heroes that can stand up to Timber, and the reason is that she can purge off the minus strength from, uh, from Whirling Death press the attack. I believe this, in the past, this lane is generally considered draw, largely. And you mm -hmm. can also just skip the waves. Do as well, if it's a one-on-one. -on -one. So... And they're really being, like... Puppy is just forever putting mid one on these more slightly unusual mids. Uh, <laughs> it's, yep. Well, we've had, we've had Pudges, like, I think he's the second time doing Jakiro, uh mid for TI. Yeah, or even the third time. Is it the third? It might, it might even be the third time, but de absolutely minimum once before. Yep, so it's going to play Kid Invoker. <laughs> be, this will be interesting. This will be a crazy game. This, like, this, no this matter who wins, cloudy. no matter how they win, the game just looks super confusing already. <laughs> and I, I, the, the logic behind Chaos's draft, it's a bit hard to see it because I feel like, again, maybe it's just something along the lines of what do you want to play? Like, what do you feel comfortable with in this game? Not specifically, what is the direction our lineup is going? What are we trying to accomplish? Uh, they're kind of just picking some heroes that they feel like are okay in the game and that have good lanes, or I'm just missing something obvious here because picking Tinker into Techies, maybe they're thinking, okay, it's a Techies game. It's going to be super slow. We're going to get a fat Tinker and go late game. But then the rest of their lineup doesn't really play like that. Timber doesn't want to go super late, nor does Visage for the time. This is a, uh, a fun thing too. Last time I saw a Techies, it was FY, and he went Null Talisman very to, begi like to begin with. Mm -hmm. Five Tangos, two Salves. This is all about suicide spamming uh, to the offlane, just to win the offlane to begin with, and then he can uh, head to the safe lane if he wants to. That's why Yapsol, for once, is not actually going with Zai. But a, uh, a big smoke up from Chaos. They can turn over. They'll see Yapsaw with a gush as well as the Nova. They can slow down Yapsaw enough. Points in Quas will not help him survive. And first blood once again going the way of Chaos. Yep. It's going to go to the Tinker. So he's the one who's going to have an advantage in there. Last game it went to the Gyro of Matumba Man. Mm -hmm. We had a very good early stage as a result. So we'll see if good observable to be planted. Stage. Nisha's gonna walk right into the middle of chaos as well. Right up the hill and into them. He can pounce, but that actually just leashes Millen together with him and Matumba more then find this kill. That's the start they wanted. Position four tied <laughs> with Crystal Maiden. Uh, they're gonna run into mana problems, but that's why Crystal Maiden's so good here. Getting the aura for both Visage and Tide is very nice. Yep, so it gets the lane. <laughs> Nisha's gonna walk himself out. He's got a TP available, and Zai's... At, okay, so they're actually switching it up. So Zai's coming to the bottom lane now. So he will end up working with Yapsaw, and Nisha will have to run all the way north. Where Puppy currently has a solo lane. Uh, <laughs> he wants to face the Timber. So he's waiting until he has the information, and now the Timber's showing bottom. Nisha starts running down there too. Matumba, Millen, and CM are all headed towards the top lane. So Crystal Maiden reveals, and Zai and Nisha, yeah, there's, there's, there's the lane switch once again. And Puppy's starting off the lane. This isn't exactly the target you want to be hitting the Crystal Maiden. He got the wave as well. Yeah. It's actually one of the easiest ways to farm as a support. Uh, Puppy may be dead. Uh, he's up way too far. Nova, Gush, and uh, has no suicide to deny himself with, so he'll just go down un inside the tree line. Yeah, but just as a side little thing as well for, for a techies when you begin with, if you actually get uh, one less set of tangos, you can uh, get two gauntlets, which allows you to go for the early soul ring. And later on, you're actually able to suicide the creep wave 
uh, as a method of farming. Uh, so you go into Tranquil Boots, so Soul Ring Tranquil Boots instead of, instead of going for something like Arcane Boots. Top lane, Puppy's back with the lead forward. Misery will be blasted down. Zai, quick fairy fire, moves through the tree lines, but Exol Assumption from Matumbaman also ready to go. Just yeah, play analysis that, on the situation. That 39 damage. <laughs> yeah, this, this bottom lane is really good for Slark. And Invoker too actually is good against Timbersaw because this is a hero that's very mana dependent and getting the Tornado EMPs off on Kezu just twice will drain his entire mana pool. And Slark will non-stop stealing the stacks. You've got to play so careful. Timber hates this map. Really annoying. Yep, so it's gonna find nice a lot. Rune? One RK, maybe you can try and help out mid one. Who's uh it's not too bad. Eight two. Versus the tinker of seven two. Now oh, Misery arrives at bottom to try to help out Keza with this laning stage. He's gotta be careful himself though. Timber doesn't offer much in the way of protection for the maiden, so if the to see him gets jumped by Invoker and Slark, she could just end up dying. They're gonna trade into Kezu a little bit for now, but he is level three. So two in the reactive armor should keep him more than safe here. That's a very interesting MP. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Need to have the call snap to help set him up for that, or at least have the leash from Nisha, Nisha yep. re ready to try and hold him there. Now Nisha's level three. Very big. Having the extra duration on the essence shift is how you're gonna eventually win this lane. It's interesting to watch Puppy actually holding his mana on top. It's uh, not something I was expecting him to do. It's uh, a small little side camp where you're able to play this, uh, which is having a mine right here and right here. Uh, it doesn't stop you from doing your pull, but it stops things like this happening with the Tidehunter because they can't deward it easily. And it stops all supports from playing the eastern side of this northern lane. But... Uh, like, normally it's just that, like, the sound alert is enough to get supports to move away. But Poppy's about to hit level 3, which means uh, two points up in, in the in the blast off. Very scary for Crystal Maidens. I think he's gonna go two in mines or get a stasis trap on. Wow, okay. Uh, the, the build that I've lately been seeing in the highest bracket is you get blast off level 1 and then you don't skill it anymore. Um... You max out the other two spells. I've seen some four four ones. I maybe I've seen some four one fours too, but oh. Oh. okay. <laughs> he just still setting himself off. Go for us. This is this the other way you can run away. It's like you know, I'll just see you always go back to base because you got a low death time. Um, so that way you don't actually need to go trankles and soul ring. But it's it always feels a little odd. And he's just resupplying Zyg. Oh, oh, great Nova, canceling off the salve. Yeah. It's actually one of the few games where it does actually make sense to go that kind of build with the, with the earlier mines, because there's nothing to clear it. But he needs to get them down inside the trees, so like one here would be absolutely perfect. Yeah, well it's a little bit further to the south, so we can't do the two together, but it's okay. Yeah. And not that I want to be judging Puppy. I'm not going to sit back. Actually, I should stop doing that. Like, I'm judging Puppy who's about to get a solo kill over on Millen. It's a level 1 blast off. He can even do it on the creep wave too. That'll help it out. And just get that jump. Just faking it, faking it, pulling. Wiggle, wiggle. Still gets the kill. <laughs> even though you die, as long as you get the initial leap forward, you will get the rest of the blast off done. Didn't get experience, though. I think uh, Zai wasn't in range to get the experience after that blast off. Exactly. You'll yeah. know exactly where this and access it right now. <laughs> He's got to keep cutting trees to so see it. This is why I kind of like when people sometimes go 1 1 1, just because if you do place these mines out here with the stasis trap, you can guarantee to get some damage in. Hmm. Uh, against most good players early on, I think the second level in mines, it doubles the damage, but can you reliably get them to touch the mines? If you can't, you might be better off with the one, one point in the stasis. Zai's in a lot of trouble. Puppy, he's gonna jump in. Misery will be dead from this. Has nowhere near enough life to be able to survive. One more attack will do it. Yapsor arrives and Zai's still kicking. Puppy wants to stay on top of him. Millen smartly denying off the red mine. So uh, no extra pop from this, but he jukes it in and around. But there's three heroes from Team Secret hanging around. Zai can't stay too close. Because if he does, Millen will just gush him down. Oh, nice salve. He's using this Observer Ward perfectly and wasting so much time. This is a support Tide Hunter. He doesn't have a TP scroll available. <laughs> this is so <laughs> fun. 
<laughs> He's back to full life. Hey, Yapsos found him again. Meanwhile, down on bottom lane, Nisha, because this is wasting so much time, there's no support to protect Nisha. And they're still going on Millen. And now Puppy, with the blast off, they have just enough damage, and Yapsos will get the kill. <laughs> That's actually really big for Kezu. He's going to get level 6, while Slark is level 4 from this kill. And this swings the balance where Nisha can die down here. He has to be really careful. Could get... Oh, there's no Frostbite skilled. If Misery had a 1-1-2 build here, that could have been a dead slark once again. Might still be, though. Yeah, it looks like it will be. He can't pounce away. The creeps are actually killing off Misery because he ran a little too close <laughs> and brought his creep wave with him. But uh, it won't matter when Nisha dies. Looks like Yapsos looking for his moment against the Tinker. Actually going for no points up in, in Missile. It's four points in March to the Machines. Yapsaw, Call Snap with the EMP burn. Tinker was already low with the four points March. They still keep walking through it. Faded. It's got enough life, I think, to survive the liquid fire. So he'll be okay. But it's going to hurt his tower a lot. He has to retreat into the jungle and then TP base after shrining. Right. Zai forcing the issue against Millen. Puppy's ready with the blast off. That's not far enough. Uh, <laughs> so you get Ether Lens and Zai is like wondering where the rest of his team was. Millen will end up going down. <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny. It was so far from hitting. Uh, like, I, I can play from the trees. <laughs> Meanwhile, Matumba's, yeah, tier one tower gone up bottom lane. What are you saying? Because Nietzsche can't defend it. it. It ended up being a really big loss that Yapsor went top. I think that's probably the biggest mistake of the game so far, is that he left the Slark alone. They've really put him in a tough spot now for this game. He is sitting down bottom trying to get experience from range, and maybe they will try this kill on Matumba. Looks like it. Yeah, still breath out. They got extra help with mid one. Hold him inside the macro apply with uh, the leash. It only now just comes in. Maybe they can have a crack at some of these. No, they can't. They can't attack fast enough to kill the familiars, but that is a dead Matumba. And now he's back in the game, right? <laughs> yeah. he, he needed this badly on Slark after being destroyed in lane because Yapsor left him. Timber got too strong together with the Maiden. What's your but puppy? now he gets to farm. Puppy jungle with 45 damage. But this is, this is the upside to mining. Soul rings up and running. Kezu, you can think about diving in, but uh, yeah, there is that one value point in Stasis Trap from Puppy. Oh. The like, skill's really good. I'd actually like to see Puppy do a little bit of prep. So this is something which you can do to protect your bounty runes. Uh, you put one red mine here, one red mine here, and here is where you throw the stasis trap. A little bit further up, so when someone walks up, the stasis trap triggers when you're in range of both the reds. Yep. But uh, he's just doing defensive behind the towers where you're going to see Kezu play in the lane. Misery still hasn't skilled up Frostbite. The duel will begin. Puppy has time to blast off, and he's got him. Bonus damage, the red mine also triggers and he's pulling him into the Stasis Trap. So Kezu, he can't move forward and they'll actually get the kill to Puppy thanks to the red mine too. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely prepared there with the free play Stasis Trap mine mm -hmm. and hoping to get Timber to chase him. He got what he wanted. And he did. Now it's time for bounty runes. Puppy hasn't placed any mines for runes, so... He's, he's playing uh, pure lane. Yep. It's no zone control. It does make a lot of sense, though, because, like, Chaos is not looking to move out of their lane. Like, they're just running down the lanes and behind the towers. Bottom lane, Slark. Bottom rune. <laughs> oh, bad timing from a top. Get the... The right perfect timing on the bird drop. Mid one's being attacked up. The two supports having a crack at him, but now Zion Puppy move over. Duel's already back off cooldown. Is it time for a leap? Kezu's coming in. The winner is going to be Zai. Mid one, low on life, giving the press the attack. Extra mover speed and Billy back off. AMP's about to come off cooldown. Oh, the chain. It misses from Kezu. Zai is chasing down Misery in the meantime. Puppy, he starts the wiggle, doesn't follow through. Rockets flying forward. Good tornado from Yapsaw will kill the Crystal Maiden over on the fall as Kezu still just trying to battle against these four players of Team Secret, dropping Zai down. Tadada will return back to the fight. Doesn't have any... Actually, he's just short of level 6. If he can kill off the creep wave, he may actually have it for the Ravage to go for. And with the EMP burn, he won't have the mana for it anyway. The macro buy helps to burn down mid one. Great control that comes with the cold snap and all of the dot effects. It's a really great teammate for Jakiro to have. The synergy with Invoker is very apparent, right? You can set each other up with Ice Path Tornado, the Cold Snap with all of Jakiro's damage over time. And he's a good 
kind of defensive support as well for Jakiro to have because sometimes you can get on top of this Jakiro and while the hero is relatively tanky in terms of strength, it has no mobility. But Invoker can offer that time to reset with a tornado when they do jump on him. There's a remote. There's plenty of remotes ready up here. Yeah, it's only two though, and they remember they're level ones. Yeah. Uh, so it actually. Hang on. Is it only two? Isn't it three? Oh, it's only two. Yeah, it's it's, it's only two of them, and um, with level one greens, they do almost no damage. But they're worth putting down just because the uh, the change to the greens, uh, where they're just worth the same as reds. They used to be a lot more expensive and pointless to throw at level one. Mid lane, mid one, turns around. He's like, well, maybe I may as well take out this tower. EMP burn with the Macropie Mill is having a hard time moving, but faded. From range can do the work. Yul Scepter up. I mean, not Yul Scepter up. Tornado up from Yapsol. Sends him down. And Zai wants to hit last hit in the tower. Misery will battle him for it. And Zai, well, he just times it perfectly. And Misery doesn't have enough damage to get the last hit in properly. Actually, this, this combo of Legion Commander Techies has been pretty fun to watch taught. Uh, Legion Commander is one of those heroes that trades really well early on and gets heroes like half HP. And they've been using Blast Off with that, but also they duel into placing mines <laughs> for the kills. It's one of the disables that lasts long enough that Techies can waddle up, put both a, a mine and a remote down. It's actually amazing out. how fast you can do it. Like, if you blast off and, you, uh, and you're and you triggering the red mine position at the same time as you're in flight, uh, the red mine almost instantly spawns. It's it's a it's a real fast fast thing to do. And then you can go into your stasis trap for the extra control. I'm interested, like, also if he goes for the uh, negative four seconds on the proximity. I've seen both builds um, most of the time, I want to say. Lately, I've seen more proximity builds than I've seen XP. Uh, but it, it's not like a consistent thing where the absolute experts do one thing and others do something else. I've seen very high level techies do both builds, so. If you go and carry techies, the 30% makes a lot of sense because you're looking to get to the 25 talent. You're yeah, look, but you're nobody looking for goes to carry techies because that doesn't work. <laughs> In some ways it does. It, can, it, it can't work, but you're not, you're not picking this hero for it and you're not planning no. generally. I mean, it can work in some, I guess, MMR ranges and games, but I think like, Every experience I've had with this hero, I have never seen anyone actually physical carry a game in the end. I mean, that's um, the beautiful thing about heroes, they don't get rare. played a hell of a lot. You get to see new things. Mid one, being initiated by Kezu, Millen. He's gonna get himself a three-man Ravish, catching out the hit, catching out the Legion Commander up high. That's why you couldn't break mid one free too quickly, but EMP in from the side, working with Nisha. Misery having a hard time walking this off. It's the urn that's making it difficult to walk, but underneath the tower, under the cover of Mars Machines from Tinker, They've got a lot to work with. They actually have to almost get rid of these trees. They can see in there. Where's our techies? Low on life and running away. Tier 1 tower will fall. Visage doing what Visage does best. Forcing tier 1 towers. Yep. They didn't have enough mines set up and ready to take this fight. And Chaos just take advantage of March of the Machines primarily there. It's really zone controlling nicely. So ab about this techies uh, 25 thing. Uh -huh. um, Theoretically, this talent is obviously amazing. 251 damage is kind of crazy on a ranged hero. Uh, and I'm not saying the build can't work, because it can. The problem is, in Dota right now, and as of late, games have a tendency to not reach that absurd amount of time. Even with techies in them, yeah. it's not that common, even in high-level pubs, that they go that hour and a half or whatever, where techies can start replacing items with damage items. Because it's not just that you get this damage talent. When you get that, you need to start getting attack speed, you need to start maybe getting crit mm -hmm. instead of your other items that give mana or cooldown reduction or whatnot. Yeah. So most of the time, that build, the transition phase, takes really long. Um, yeah. You have to slow the game down if you're going to do that you as have a techie. Slow it down a lot. And that's the reason why you get the uh, the four seconds of the mines, because this is something which um. Like, I, I, I want to see just how Puppy handles it, because it was one of the things that Kuro did. Like, you mentioned it before, like, like what you do is you take over part of the map, and then you put down the mines. The changes to the map that make these very narrow pathways uh, means that you can actually do it with just two reds and a stasis trap. You control that, that entrance. Yeah. And there's, there's no real way to stop that. I think the problem that you have is the familiars. Like, if I remember correctly, they actually trigger the reds and the stasises. So keeping that kind of control doesn't really seem to work as well in this game. If it, I'm trying to remember the mechanic correctly if, that, if it goes that way. Yapsaw, mid one puppy, everyone's coming through the rear. They're gonna catch Misery in the back lines. 
And uh, he will not be able to survive this mid one from up on the high ground. He's able to get that kill. Zai trying to retreat back out again. Phase boots and press attack still not going to be enough. With the tornado, create a little bit of extra space. Mid one hits the door. Breath, but quickly blinks away. VT faded. And maybe even Kezu chaining up, looking for the kill over on mid one. He'll find Puppy instead. He'll end up silencing the Tinker. That really won't be enough, but it may buy some time for Nisha to have his own battle against Potomac. But Millen. Oh, the Ravage! Wait, no effect on Nisha! He pounces away, and Nisha will still die in the tree lines because Tinker could chase him down. He used the Ravage a little bit too early. Dark Pact was still running, so got perched off immediately. Oh, nice catch. Mid one TPing out right next to the Dire Observer Ward. What's happening right now to me is the perfect showcase of Techies' biggest weakness. Is if you're not set up, the hero sucks. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just <laughs> bad. But, but and it's, it's, a, it's a different way to set up. Like, like the fight ended up coming up the ramp, but you didn't put down an Observer. Uh, you didn't put down, like, for the Red Mine as well as Stasis Trap. You, you have to be, in, in order to take these fights as secret, you kind of have to predict where Chaos's next move is, so that you can have pre-placed mines and take a fight around the area. Techies' contribution to team fights in this stage of the game, before he has many items and high levels, you can't just put a remote mine down in the fight and be like, I did a lot. That's what you can do later when you have Ags in level 18. But right now, his his damage output is pretty insignificant and his spells are hard to land and be useful with if they're not pre-placed. So you, you need to think ahead, you need to be ready and force the fights to happen in a favorable spot for you. And that's just, that seems to be really difficult for Seeker to, to prepare for just because of the tempo that the, the Tinker and Visage put on these towers. They yeah. show up too fast to I'm take the next and the next and the next. Yeah, I'm a lot happy to actually see Puppy doing what he's doing. But uh, like actually prepping up inside this tree line is something you do against the Tinker. But without kill packs, it's, uh, it's, very, it's very problematic. Techies makes it space by getting these quick pops. He's still doing a hell of a lot of damage to Milne. He almost wanted to go for the blast off. Right. Chaos do the right thing. They stay inside the lane, pushing down. Timber Chain forward over on the Timber Saw. Puppy just going to deny himself out. And Chaos are not giving him the space to set up. Great Observer Wards. We'll see anything being prepped on the northern side. So now they can move towards the top lane and just fight that out. And what you do now as Chaos is you keep the tempo up. You've cornered, if you corner a Techies team and they don't get to get out on the map, it's really hard for Techies to have an impact in this stage of the game. If this was 30 minutes oh. later and you control the map, Techies can still hold his high ground, but Puppy's not farmed or strong enough to really accept losing all his towers. <laughs> So the courier was almost going to run over Yapsaw, and it did run over Nisha. But they leap forward with the call snap, Fader getting caught out, and Nisha hunting well. You still have the old techies trap that was prepped before. Able to actually get that kill. Puppy will die in the meantime, trying to get the de-warding done. But home in trouble. But no creep wave to work with. Backdoor protection. The creep wave was close enough at the time. But they're really beating into this tier 3 tower, 19 minutes in. Now, Nisha looking for the leash, looking to try and catch somebody up. He's taking so much damage to the Soul Assumption. Thanks to one charges, he'll end up surviving. But EMP Tornado going to work once more. The duel is over on the back line, keeping the tight under under control. They don't want to let Millen ravage, but he gets it off, hitting all of Team Secret down. Midwan's trying to retreat back into the base. But two big cores down from Team Secret. Oh, what a meme. Another small thing you could do, which I, I'm actually liking the puppy is doing, uh, mines on the sides of the ramp. Means you can actually plant one in the middle, but it lets you do a perimeter uh, with mine and mine, and then you can put the stasis traps on the, on the back ends. Basically means that no one can really jump in or force stuff around the sides or play the edge of your base. Yeah, I don't think Chaos have any plan or need to do this. Uh, oh. They can send in Kezo in the front and put a sentry down, and he will tank everything. Yep. Ice pass there. Tower's almost gone, but with the drop down. Well, and they actually just walk up and take out the mines. That tier one tower's days are numbered. Zero. Alright, just keep going, and going, and going, and going. Secret are buying all the time that they can while Nisha's farming the map. 
They need to keep dropping down ice paths. Maybe they have some macro pyre soon to defend these barracks. Tornado EMP. Yeah, it's coming off cooldown in a second, but the EMP's like, it was another two seconds. They really are trying to buy this time. But the familiars are the things at the front lines, and like Faded, all he has to do is just keep beating back in. As long as that catapult's there, he's gonna be at the front line, so goodbye to your melee racks. You didn't like the Tinker pick into Techies, but it's been working really well this game in just, like, raw farm, because Secret couldn't make a aggressive enough place to take over the map, so Tinker has just been farming like crazy. It's There's been no pressure stopping him at all, and yeah, if, if he gets caught in tree lines, in the roots and stuff, like, which happened once, like you pointed out, the top trap that they set, yeah. you can catch him off, but it's under the condition that you have map control, that you can even set these traps, and they're just not... Secret are not getting a foothold in the game. They lost their towers and the map has just been choked out. And you can't aggress into a team that's leading against techies like this because, well, it's kind of going to be a 4 and 5 fight at this point. Um, so, after the laning stage and what Chaos managed to accomplish with taking bottom and mid towers away, what's what's the play? What can you actually do on the map? Oh, yeah. Feels a little bit limited. Dagon's up and faded. He's looking for his own little battle. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, man. Like, it's... It's, it's just weird to see a techies game where you don't actually have that map control where chaos aren't they're not fearful to move forward the familiars are giving them the confidence because they're giving them the high ground vision to actually enter into the base yep they have tanky heroes and they won their lanes and yeah. therefore they can just force their way through yeah these these type of traps work beautifully because they're able to catch out the tech uh like the uh the tinker but you also want to have it down here in the tree lines it's just puppy doesn't have the time because, yeah, this exact happens, like, almost in the box. Faded just jumps in. And what do you now do? Those green mines are only level one. They don't do anywhere near enough damage to really dissuade Chaos from continuously pushing in. And Nisha can't go underneath the march of the machines. There's too many waves of them as well. Ravage is already up. The tier three tower will be picked apart. And into the melee racks they go. Nisha, oh, it's actually Zai with the jump in towards Batalman. The Lotus Orb actually reflected back Batalman. Well, you've already got the kill out. Zai falls down. It's a good ice path with the macro pyre and Tornado. Kent is having a hard time getting away from this one. A mid one. He just can't stand here. They at least got the rebuttal kill. So Matumban does fall down. Nisha playing the back lines. Needs to get up the hill and away. Puppy, that's an interesting jump. Sans is a crystal maid, but easily killed off by the Shark of Kezu. It's a nice ice path, allowing Nisha to come back in once more. Looking for another kill. The familiar birds are looking for him, but needs to regen for a moment before then he can battle into Kezu as Milan continues his own run away. A quick force up. Low on life. The liquid fire will tick him down. As Kezu is the sole survivor of chaos. They keep that bottom lane of Rags alive. The mid lane is pushing in pretty far as Team Secret want to keep the chase going. Kezu, he's got enough mana to chain himself back behind the Tier 1 tower. And Yapsaw, Tornado will cancel the TP with the EMP combination. And another duel is out. Kezu, he has good reactive armor charges. The damage output won't be enough to get through him, not during the dual duration, but it will still get through him. And they'll take the Tier 1 tower while they're here. All right. This time, Puppy had more mines set up and they used three buybacks, so they, they won the fight flat out on numbers. They were losing this fight for sure if it was anywhere else in, than their base, but with this number of buybacks, uh, it's doable. That was kind of an 8v5 that they ended up winning. They, they used three buybacks, right, and zero on the enemy team. Yeah, Jakiro, Legion, and Techies all bought back. But it's worth it because of how far behind they are. Look at Nisha instantly back into the fight. He's still got so much Edson shifted that he wants to keep these fights going. Mine's being popped out. Curry is flying over the top. This is an absolute debacle. The fight, but Miller will go down in the mid as Matumaman split, shotting out. Sole assumption on the two hits gives him so much damage. Nisha jumping himself away from misery. Zai's in pretty deep with no way to really escape from this. Observers and sentries being placed down, but Nisha just back out, grab the runes. But those diebacks are going to hurt because they're dead for over a minute. I thought Zai might duel the Maiden there to stop the freezing field, but Slark didn't have anything to work with. Ulti on cooldown, low health. They couldn't really have committed and got anything out of it. Thank you, Absol. Oh. Underneath Observer and Sentry. He threw out his own Sentry so he could have some information. The issue will pounce away. Hilariously enough, like Chaos, the line was drawn instantly from Misery. Go down mid, rotate to the bottom lane. Take out this second lane of Rax. Yep, they know there's two heroes without buyback. 
course. Uh, Slark has a good amount of stacks, so when his PKB is ready, this might be defendable with a buyback from Invoker on the melee racks. We'll see if they try to do exactly that. They have Glyph. Yeah, I think they let this one go. Without the two big cores. Yeah, they're not trying. No. Well, Fortified it by a little bit of time. Maybe. Well, they don't have a creep wave. Okay, so what was the plan there? Now they don't have Glyph for the top side. Huh. All right, let's not question the plan. Puppy's close to eggs. That is a game-changing item for techies. They can play for the last lane where they can just keep putting mines with the minefield sign. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it has a 50% downtime, so you need to make the most of it and get a really good fight out of it the first time you have it. And we'll be fighting the against the Aegis too. Chaos are really smart about this. Like the worst, the things that uh, Techies hates more than anything else are like heroes like Raid King who could just reincarnate after they cop the entire the brunt of the mines. But having the Aegis is immortal. Even worse for Techies to lose. And they have no information. Normally you drop like a keg in there so you can watch Roshan. Because they are also very useful as like mobs. But Matumba, the one who's already really difficult to kill now, has the Aegis the Immortal. Yeah, Sora and Isha are playing in the enemy jungle. They're waiting for somebody to walk into them so they can get a pick, but the heroes are actually nearby from Chaos, and this could end up backfiring. Zai, frostbitten up, he's already used to press the attack. Tick is TPing in, and goodbye Zai. Dagon from Faded Fish, the job is ninth kill of the game. And Techies may have that Aghanim Scepter, but there are no green mines up, and if, and if Chaos want to end this, they just go straight down mid. There is no prep whatsoever here. And Team Secret just don't have the cause to try and fight this one, even trying to get an Aghanim Scepter over on mid one. But that won't finish in time. Okay, yeah, well, he'll actually sell items to do it. So Yabsaw Tornado is only going to catch out Familiars. They won't care. Slark in behind. Yep, going straight after Misery. Quickly, Dagon, low on life. Great Ice Path. Just trying to hold him there in position. The longer this fight goes, the better it is for Nisha. Moving from target for then again, Nisha just got evaporated by Faded and Kezu. He didn't BKB. He didn't think he was going to get blown up, but that Dagon. They have buyback on Slark, though, but he lost his stacks. Look at him go, Chaos, they know how to win this game. Get in there, never give them set up time. Take out the tier four towers. And take a victory against Team Secret. Zai, the Ravager Millen is perfect. Allowing him the Anchor Smash kill to catch Zai out. Tinker's doing all the range damage and prep for him. But the tier four towers are lost. Timbersaw. Still not. Oh, he's got a lot of reactive armor charges. EMP will burn, losing a lot of mana. Nisha has already committed the BKB. He's trying to get rid of these familiars, but he can't even stay on top of them. Another ice path out. Maybe one take his mind the back might be able to do a lot of damage to Misery, but again, they can't get the kills. Another tornado up. They'll hit the deck. That's not enough. Still only level twos. And this ancient is going down. Little's enough to make it do. Puppy can jump himself to the back line if he wants to kill Misery. And she gets Cold Snap and Spirit Vessel and Sunstrike. Yabs all trying to do it himself as a level one. Nisha will jump in and finish the job. But Chaos, they're doing the work. They're going to take the Radiant Ancient. Unless there's some kind of defense. Faded, he's low on life. They actually finally get the lockdown with the uh, with the duel out. Zai will get the kill, but the Ancient's already gone. 29 minutes, Chaos will take it. And that's uh, just... Okay, not what I wanted to see, but hey, maybe that's a reason why you wouldn't ban techies against secret anymore.